So let's talk about named parameters. Now, named parameters became very popular in functional languages, specifically for Ruby, Python, and other languages which deal with functional constructs that return things, or factory functions that get really complicated. An example is Backbone. Backbone, for example, you'll create a model or a view or whatever, and you'll pass in a significant amount of optional parameters. You pass in this object, right, with name value pairs, that can create things. If you don't pass them in, great. If you do, hey, that's great too, right? So the point here is you pass in one parameter as an object, okay? And it doesn't matter if you set those values or not. Each one of those is defined with a default value or not, okay? The point is that you can pass in one parameter as an object and get an object back, and it'll have some nice defaults. The reason people utilize named parameters or instead of positional parameters is that you can choose any order that you wish to do them. So if, you're, so if you've dealt with strictly typed languages in the past, the problem is, is that as you start to develop your API and feel like it, the positional parameters change, which means that anybody who utilizes that function changes. So if you're creating an API, in this case, like an MVC framework, like Backbone or Angular, it's a lot easier to support if you have optional parameters. I mean, people's existing APIs who use an older version of framework work, and those who choose to utilize the newer features can consume the exact same API utilizing those parameters. And their code will also work with multiple versions, right? They don't get penalized. So you kind of lose things for those who use newer language constructs with older frameworks, like the error hit checking, you have to be a little more precise, right? But for the most part, it's a lot easier to develop APIs. It's a lot more flexible. And the code for those who use it, it's a lot more easier on those who consume those APIs, right? They, they don't have to put default values in all those personal parameters. They don't care about, right? And order doesn't matter. So very flexible. Some people hate them because they feel like they're fragile to each their own, but it is a power that darts will allow you to utilize. Let's say another same message function, okay? Void! This is a match of three or two. Say message. The way positional work is when you define it, you use these little curly bracket things inside of the function definition, okay? And the way it works is, order doesn't matter. In this case, we'll do, uh, let's say, a weapons loadout. So let's say, get, uh, I don't know, configure weapons loadout or something. And we'll say, uh, enumeration or string of a, uh, let's say, sword. A string of a shield, if home slice decides to utilize it. Again, these are optional. You do not have to pass these in. And if you do, you can do it in order. Sword not equal null. Home slice using sword. If shield not equal null. Home slice using shield. And just to verify, we can snag these values. Turn them up here. All right, so configure weapons loadout. We'll call it with nothing. And guess what? The compiler's like, man, it's all good. You don't have to call me with nothing. I'm cool with that. I'll tell you nothing. I came from the streets. I don't need, I don't need nothing. I'm self-sufficient. Self-sufficient in that they use parameters that are not passed in, it'll do nothing. So let's give it something. So how do we pass it in? When you pass it in, you it looks like a positional function, but it's actually not. It's a name value pair. So in this case, we'll say sword is a, let's say long sword. Notice it looks like we're doing name value pair, right? But again, it, it, it's smart enough to know that your sword is a, is a long sword, right? So you don't have to create an object. Again, happy as can be. No warnings or nothing. So home slice is using this long sword. So just to show you, it doesn't matter what order, we'll do the shield first. Let's see a buck turn. Okay? And again, it looks like positional, but it's not. It's all about these colons, right? It looks like an object definition, or mean value pair. When you run that, home slice is using a long sword, home slice is using a buckler, it's a uh, formatting the right guy. Again, so it's a there you go. So again, it's going to run the code in the correct order, sword first and then shield, but it doesn't matter what order I call it in because this is a position, you know, a named value parameter function. You can do whatever we want. Now, if you want to do default value, so let's give them a bastard sword by default and a tower shield by default. So those are the default values, okay? 
So if we choose not to provide any of these in there and then call it, it'll have default values, okay? We can also override those default values with ours. So we give them a short sword, but we'll use whatever the default sword we give us, okay? See, gives us power. So that is name parameter 